Fox, uh, C-O-X. I am the Democratic candidate for Congress here in California's 21st Congressional District. Um, yeah. uh, just a little bit about myself. I am the son of immigrants. My mom came from the Philippines. My dad from China. Uh, they both came to the States. They worked hard. They became very proud and naturalized U.S. citizens. And they really uh, put us to work and, and with you know, the, uh, the values of what we know our immigrant communities do. They work hard, they uh, keep their nose to the grindstone, and they try to make better opportunities for their, their family. Uh, my mom growing up was telling me, to the top, which in Tagalog means, hey, get to work. You know? and so, uh, and that's what I've done. What I do here today in the Central Valley, I've got what's called a, a community development entity. And what we do, is we try to make a positive difference in the lives of the people here. We try to do that by doing things like bringing health care access. We've opened four health care clinics so far that have brought health care access to 26,000 residents of the 21st Congressional District. And those 26,000 residents, last year, they were served with over 100,000 health care appointments. We try, to do, uh, we try to create jobs. I mean, there's nothing more important than jobs. And over the last six years, we've created 1,500 jobs. That's nearly a job a day. And when we create a job, yeah, when we create a job, it's got to be a quality job that offers at least a living wage and offers benefits, medical, dental, vision, retirement, uh, and vacation, and those types of things. And, and really one of the things that I try to do when we make an investment is to offer things like, uh, to have this institution that we're making an investment in, offer things like tuition reimbursement. And one of the great examples of, of how I think we've been successful is with a young woman who I met uh, uh, just last year. She had gotten a job, uh, she'd been working at McDonald's, and then got a job at one of the community health clinics that we financed. And because that community health clinic offered tuition reimbursement, she took it upon herself to take classes, to work hard, and some three and a half years later, she now had an AA nursing degree. It was making fifty-eight thousand dollars a year and paying back benefits, right? So she's gone from McDonald's to the middle class in less than four years, you know, by working hard and with the support of her community, her organization, and that's the types of things that I think we should be investing. In. There's no better investment than to invest in people, and that's what I see that we can do, and that's what I promise to do as a congressman to invest in the people of this district, which is what I've been doing yesterday, that's what I'm doing today. And I'll be doing it in the future regardless of if I win this election or not. But I'm sure that we're going to win this election. Yeah. Sir, I'm going to take off. Uh, I, I can tell you Social Security uh, is very, very important to me. Uh, when I was a, a, a boy, uh, unfortunately my father was killed in a car accident. And I remember getting these checks that were uh, labeled OASDI. Do you guys know what that stands for? Right? Old, old age, right? Survivors Disability Insurance. It's that survivor's insurance. So really what was happening is, you know, is that my family had this tragedy, and what was there? There was a nice social safety net to help protect us, right? Right, a little bit of relief and comfort when families befall tragedies. And that's what I'm, you know, so I've seen the direct benefit of what Social Security can provide to us. And that's why I'm just so aghast and frankly angry uh, about the GOP's attempt to cut our Social Security and Medicare. And that's, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what you see every day, driving down here. I mean, you see Mick Mulvaney, the budget director for Trump, what are we saying? That we've got to go after the quote-unquote entitlement programs, right? They think they're an entitlement rather than an earned benefit. Hey, and you saw it, you just saw it recently with Trump, he said, hey, listen, we can't afford uh, to give our federal employees a 2% pay increase because of the budget deficit. The budget deficit that was caused by this very irresponsible tax bill that they, that they passed last year, which doubled the deficit in one year. And the one thing that they didn't tell you about that tax bill, when you look into it, go home tonight in, or this afternoon and Google it. Will this tax break, will this tax cut and these deficits lead to automatic protection of Social Security and Medicare. And the fact is they will. They've already passed a law because of this deficit that's going to cause automatic cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Right? That's one thing that my opponent will never bring up. That's what's going to happen. That's why we have to turn around to Congress in 42 days from today. Uh, uh, 
with regard to the specific questions here, do I support uh, so, uh, eliminating the cap to uh, expand Social Security? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the cap right now is on $128,000 a year. Uh, the average Wall Street income right now is $450,000 a year. So they meet their cap in March, mm. right? Yeah. And they had their, then they had their taxes cut by half last year, right? If you're a hedge fund manager, you're still only paying 50% income. I think they can afford to pay a little bit more, their fair share. Yeah. Um, yeah. Certainly, uh, we'll ask for legislation the Financial Job and Affordable Care Act. That's one of the primary uh, reasons why I'm here today. Uh, because we saw the, the positive benefit the Affordable Care Act is making right here in the Central Valley, right here in the 21st Congressional District. The, un the uninsured rate went down from almost 30% down to seven percent. I mean, it's had a profound effect. And what here's here's one fact for you: if you have insurance, if you have just basic insurance, any insurance at all, your survival rate if you if you have something like cancer increases by 50 50 percent just by having it. And you know, and so this has made a profound effect on the health and livelihood, and really, it, your chance of living right here in the Central Valley. And, and I've seen this uh, not only in the clinics I've been building, but my wife is also a pediatric intensive care physician. Uh, and I can tell you what, uh, how much time, I want to make sure I'm sorry, I'm sorry, about three minutes. Uh, let me share a story is that uh, a few years ago, my wife, uh, she'd been working all weekend. She went in early Saturday morning, she came home late Sunday night, and uh, you know, she took a shower, came to bed basically typed up a letter and brought it to bed and says, hey, I want you to read this. And I'm reading it. And the letter, in essence, said, I quit. All right? And I go, whoa, hey, you're going to make money here. Uh, but, uh, but what had happened, let me tell you, what had happened is that she'd been working all weekend long on a poor child who just had a couple of limb All right? I mean, a terrible tragedy to this child and this family. And why? Because a week or so before, a little bit longer than a week, the child couldn't get treated for a simple case of pneumonia. All right? They couldn't get into a clinic. They didn't have insurance. By the time that they finally got to the hospital, the kid was in septic shock, had sepsis, right, organ failure, and led to this terrible tragedy. My wife was basically saying, listen, is that I can only do so much at the bedside. We need to do something on the front side, on the policy, of having a policy that's going to provide quality, affordable health care for all when they need it, regardless of their ability to pay for where they came from. That's what we need to do for America. That makes the best uh, economic sense. It makes the best social sense. And it's, it's what we know uh, we need to do, that health care is a human right. Uh, what do we love? Expand Medicare, absolutely long-term care, including uh, you know, for seniors, or sorry, uh, home care, vision, dental, dietary, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially this the point about Medicare, you know, right now, Medicare can't negotiate prices for prescription drugs, which is crazy. And this is an administration that said they were going to be tough on prescription drugs. Guess what? For every price decrease last year for prescription drugs, there were 96 price increases. 96 to 1, 100 to 1. Are they attacking it? No. And, it will end. and I'd like you to go take a look at where my opponent gets his money. Pharmaceutical companies, right? To protect that high price, to take it out of our bags. Uh, and really, with the last question of, uh, to build affordable housing for low-income seniors, uh, not only do I support that, that's what I do today. I'm on the board of one of the largest nonprofit affordable housing developers in California. And we focus on building quality, affordable housing for seniors, for veterans, for homeless, and for the uh, and for lower-income populations. So that's what I'm doing today. That's what I'll continue to do in Congress. Thank you so much. Thank you.